Rashad, I'll just uh, start here. As you look back 23 seasons ago or whatever, could you have imagined back then that, that this thing would still be going into a 25th season? No, I never imagined, and, and especially being on the second season, you know, it was one of those seasons where they were trying to work out the kinks and things that didn't go well in the first season and trying to implement them in the second season. And, uh, you know, when I was on the show, they still had the uh, the coaches challenge, and, and the, it was more than that. It was the uh, the athletes challenge. We would challenge each other, and we had those little things. So um, to see where the show is now and seeing this all these years later and so many champions and so many great moments of the UFC happen on the show, it, it's unbelievable. It's been a very uh, an amazing tool uh, for the whole organization. You obviously were on the show as a fighter, then you were back as a coach. Which did you enjoy the process of, of more? Um, uh, I enjoyed being a coach more because as a fighter, uh, it, it's you never, you never get comfortable with it because um, at some point, no matter how much it provides you with all the food you can eat and all the alcohol you can drink or whatever uh, demands you may have, you're still stuck, and you're stuck there for for you know six to eight weeks, and you can't have the interaction you normally have. So that part sucked. But at least being a coach, I was able to um, feel a little bit of that. But then I was able to have a regular life outside of that. A lot of guys that go on the show say that they, they come off and say, "Man, I never want to do that again." The guy sitting next to you went back and did it again. Would you have ever gone back again as a contestant? Um, never say never, but. Uh, it, I don't think it's something I would want to do it again, just because uh, it, it was, it, it was a tough process for me, you know, uh, and especially now mentally, I'm just like a different fighter altogether. Like for me, going into the house, I was used to fighting tournaments, and that's all I ever fought in before. So fighting a tournament wasn't that bad, but now after you know being served up one fight every, you know, whenever I ask for one or whenever I can schedule one for one, um, I got kind of pampered in a way, and I'm not really. I'm not really built like that no more. You know, before I would, I would uh, during the season of The Ultimate Fighter, I got hurt a couple times, but I still had to tape it up and, and fight. So uh, I'm not built like that anymore to do that. And then, Eddie, for you, uh, what made you want to go back and do this again when they called you and said, this is an opportunity that we're, that we're going to give you. Why do it again? To be quite honest, I don't know what I was thinking. It was, it was, it was surreal. You, know, you don't get a chance to get you know, a second opportunity like I did. And for me, most people thought it was kind of crazy. Why go back when you already won it all? There's really nowhere else you can go. But uh, once I kind of you know, let it all sink in, I felt like I had a lot of unfinished business. I feel like you know, people will say the season was redemption, but it's more like a redemption thing for life. Like we all go through different things that some people don't want to talk about, don't want to discuss. But I just felt that my true potential was never reached. I, I would always perform well in the gym versus world champions. But the fans, the people that I want to see, my, you know, showcase my abilities in the cage, that was never reached. And I figured that was the best way to do it was on a stage like that in The Ultimate Fighter for the second time. You weren't the only one, obviously, in the house that had been there before. But, but as you went into it, did you feel like that that gave you an advantage this time around, knowing how the process worked and everything like that? I think Rashard said it best. You kind of can never be prepared for that because... Once you go through it once, you kind of block out all those memories of the, the hard times. Because I feel like I've been through a lot in life, but that's probably one of the toughest things I ever did. Especially when you're a father, when you're a provider. You know, to be away from your family, to be away from your comfort zone, to be away from your coaches, it's a completely different element. And it's, it's, it's tough. But as far as being there before is it an advantage, um, knowing what you get into, I feel like They've been doing it for, what, 25 seasons plus with other uh, international stuff. They know how to create the perfect science experiment, and it's always some, uh, some twist that you're just not prepared for. Did you like it better the second time around or the first time? Uh, believe it or not, I loved it the second time more for some reason. I'm just guessing that it was a little bit different. Not as many um, pranks, you know, veteran fighters that, you know, came in there with one, one goal in mind, and it wasn't to, to make a name for themselves being a uh, prankster but as an actual fighter. So the veteran skies being in the house was definitely a lot better than some young rookies, myself included. Uh, Eddie, having gone through this prior, a lot of fighters will talk about the, the biggest opponent on this show is, the, is making weight so much in such a short amount of time. It, was that the case for you that that almost becomes the biggest challenge more so than even who you're fighting in the house? 
Uh, for me, it was, it was, it was wild because uh, season 19, that was the first time I ever made 185 was on the show. And I had no clue what I was getting myself into. You know, making weight three times in a five-week period, um, fighting that many times, like Rashad said, being banged up. It was an a eye-opener and a shocker. And in this season, I took it a step deeper, going to 170. Uh, that scale, I, I'm, we see it now. It's uh, the first fight, and it's tough, but this sport is not for everybody. And, you know, it takes a special breed of person to sit there and, uh, you know, make the weight, not once, not twice, but three, four times to win the whole entire thing. And, you know, it's a mental thing. But I felt like it's, if it doesn't, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and that's the case. But like you said, no doubt about it, that scale is probably one of the bigger opponents, especially, you know, in, a, in an environment like this. And uh, one question for Rashad, just being here in the state of New York, is there any update on your situation? Are you optimistic you will get to fight in New York or are things still where they were prior? Um, things are still where they are currently, uh, where they were prior. Um, I haven't really revisited yet uh, the situation and try to amend it yet. I'm just gonna wait, let some time pass by and if the opportunity comes again, maybe a year down the line where everything is lining up and, and um, everything's been going good with me fighting other places. Then I would then I would try to fight here again, but right now I'm just gonna just uh, you know focus on fighting other places and focus on getting back on track. Hey Rashad, uh, right over here. You competed in Ultimate Fighter too. You also competed in the memorable competition against Rampage Jackson. Can you share with us any favorite moments from either or? Um, you know, I, I guess the favorite moment from uh, from the Rampage season was um, you know when, when they put the chickens in the car. You know, the pranks that they used to have pulled off was just funny because um, I was spending most of my time really trying to coach the guys, you know, and, and being a contestant on the show before, I had a different perspective and outlook on Rampage. You know, at the time, Rampage was getting ready for the movie A-Team, so he was, he'll uh, miss most of the time because he was taking acting classes. So um, when he came back, he was just like in a different playful mood, and him and his team would get together and they'd do these crazy pranks and they did the one with the, the chickens in the car, and I thought that was pretty funny. It just kind of lightened the mood up a bit. And um, you know, I remember when I was on the show, uh, one of my favorite mo moments of the, of the show was when um, I was I had a fight in the semifinals, and I had uh, Matt Hughes as my corner guy. And at the time, me and Matt Hughes didn't get along. And uh, he didn't even show up for our one opportunity to train together before the fight. So I'm just like, you know, this guy is gonna be terrible, and I'm going there pissed off at him and then I come in there and he kind of gives me that Matt Hughes smile and joke wrestling move and then he's like okay Rashad whatever happened before it happened before let's not worry about that I understand you have a hand injury but what I want you to do is I want you to look at your hand and I want you to punch him in the head as hard as I can hard as you can with the head as soon as you get out there and I was like why would I do that he says because then after that you'll be able to fight because you won't think about it no more and I did it and it worked <laughs> Are you uh, really uh, like shocked, amazed how the Ultimate Fighter, the evolution of the show has just become so popular, the brand? No, I really have, you know, because um, the Ultimate Fighter is a great introduction for the sport for a lot of people who are watching for the first time. And it doesn't miss that mark. No matter how many seasons, it doesn't miss that mark and it always engages new fans. So um, they have a winning formula for making that happen. So I'm not really surprised by how, how much it's, uh, you know, been able to continue to be what it has been, but uh, you know, I I am you know I really proud to have been a part of all of it, and uh, you know, sky's the limit where the show can continue to go because it's a proven show that great recruiting tool, and it brings in animals. And final question, Eddie, uh, can you compare the Ultimate Fighter uh, 25 to the Ultimate Fighter 19? Uh, the experience, uh, the comparison between the two. Uh, the big experience uh, comparison I could say is just the whole atmosphere. Uh, for me, the weight was obviously a, a big difference, you know, going from 85 to 170. But just the mindset of all the fighters. I think mindset is everything. And whether, you know, you're getting up, going to work, whether you're being a, a single dad, single mom, mindset is everything. And season 19, I feel like there was a lot of guys there for a wrong reason. You know, some guys there just to be on TV, some guys there you know, just to try to, you know, get their 15 seconds of fame. Everybody on season 25 was, was veterans. I was probably the, the least experienced guy on the fight, on the, on the, um, that season. And every single guy, you could learn something from them. So, 
it was just like like a six week, you know, fight camp, and guys were hungry, and it was just an awesome experience, and I I enjoyed it maybe because it's the most recent. I enjoyed it more than uh, season 19. It had to be like uh, you know how I used to go to night school at, at uh, in Triple C. And all the, the the adults who actually paid their own money and and were like had real life, they would come to class and the class, the questions that they asked were a lot different than the students that were my age. So it probably had to be a lot different with adults with a real objective behind you know being inside there versus you know kids who just want to have a good time. This guy is good. <laughs> Question for Eddie. Eddie, you might remember speaking to me in Dublin when you came over as a guest fighter for UC Dublin. Um, at the time, you had a legalized MMA New York T-shirt on. Like, don't know if you remember it, but um, now that we're three years later, MMA is legal in New York. Is your plan to get onto a fight card in New York? Obviously, as soon as you possibly can, or what's the plan? Listen, I I've been politicking. I've been literally, uh, I've been fortunate, man. I, I'm really young in this sport, and I was able to grow up in front of all you guys. Like, I grew up in the UFC, and I wanted nothing more than to fight in front of my, you know, my home crowd. And it's a little bit bigger than me. The sport itself means everything to like Rashard, to Matt Serra. I almost you know, feel bad that Matt being a legend never got a chance to fight in front of his, his hometown. So to see that you know, guys from New York were able to fight at the Garden in such an epic event literally brought tears to my eyes. I would love to be a part of it, but I know my time is coming. I know there's gonna be tons of uh, fights in New York and I will fight in New York. Yeah, questions for uh, Eddie. Um, first off, uh, I noticed after you got released from the UFC, you only had the one fight, and then you just got on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, what was sort of the reason for that, uh, taking so much time off? Um, I'm a little bit different, man. Like, I came in with a business background. I was always in finance. I picked up fighting almost on a bet because I went to UFC 101 to watch Anderson Silva fight Forrest Griffin. And I was in that arena, and I was just, I was compelled. Just like watching, you know, this, this whole entire clip, I said, that was me. I went into this arena and I was like, I want to give this a shot. My family thought I was crazy. I was making good money to leave a, a cushy desk job. They thought I got hit in the head before I even got hit in the head. And I was just passionate about it. So for me, it means like everything. Like I literally just, after getting out of the UFC, I reevaluated why I was doing it. Because a lot of times we, we lose you know, focus and we lose that mindset. So I wasn't going to be one of those guys that just go takes a fight just to take a fight. It had to make sense for myself. I had to make sense for my family. So I was just building my own businesses on the side and waiting for the right opportunity. And everything happens for a reason. That opportunity came. Some people thought I was crazy. I turned down some offers at some, some bigger promotions. But I just didn't want to feel tied up and feel like I was fighting because I had to. I wanted to do because I wanted to. And without revealing anything on the show, uh, who, who did you sort of develop the, the best relationships with on, on the show as far as some of the guys on there? I was fortunate that, uh, you know, being on season 19, I knew nobody going into that season. This season, I, you know, built some relationships with some guys, and I had, you know, Diego Lima already on the show already that we went through, you know, battles together, and, and I had a brotherly, you know, bond with him. And I made a promise to myself not to get attached to anybody, but, you know, when, when you're in, you know, locked up with, you know, what, well, 13 other guys, 14 other guys, you know, that whole entire time, you know, you, things happen. Like, you, you build bonds with guys. When you go through battles, wars, you know, you just build a bond. So I got close with everybody, man. That was, that was the difference when you're talking about a veteran group of guys. It's a brotherhood. You know, when we fight, you know, we're in, what, the 1% of people on this planet doing this. So I had a pretty much good bond with almost everybody. Maybe one person I didn't click too well with. I guess you have to wait to see that. <laughs> Just got a quick question here for uh, Rashad. Um, when would you like to get back in the cage, uh, you know, regardless of New York? Um, do you sort of have that mapped out when we can see you in the cage again? I'm looking to fight in July, and, uh, you know, I, I want to get three fights in this year. I think that's one of the biggest things that's been uh, off about my game is the fact that I haven't been competitive, uh, competitively uh, consistent enough. And, and I think that once I start, you know, getting some fights under me and just get some more octagon time, then I'll, I'll get different results. But, um I'm looking to fight July uh, International Fight Weekend. And just quickly, because uh, I'm up here in uh, Canada, um, got to ask, I know David Loazzo is training with you right now, and he's apparently having a comeback. He wants to return to MMA. Can you uh, tell us anything about that? Yeah, uh, you know, he, he's been training, and he's been, uh, he's been training for a while. And, and um, you know, he's also been doing something really good that a lot of fighters don't really get to do when you're actually in the sport, which is build his business as, 
as uh, Ed was saying, you know, he's building his business outside of fighting. So he's been, you know, building his brand and his fight gym. And then now, you know, with doing so, it's made him a big student of the game. You know, he's been a big student of jujitsu, working on his, his uh, area where he was weak as hat before and working on his wrestling. And, uh, you know, now, honestly, I think that he's better than he was before he left. So, uh, you know, if he does get a chance to come back, he's going to do some things. Hey, Rashad. Over here. Oh, I see you. Um, a couple weeks ago, you said you wanted to fight Anderson Silva, and then he was booked against Kelvin Gastelum, and now Gastelum is out. Does that still interest you, even though he's probably going to remain on the card in June? Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely interests me. I, I want to uh, talk to my guys about that and see if that's something that can that can happen. But you know, Anderson's one of those guys who, um, you know, I think the world about, and I think that he's, you know, probably one of the best fighters ever to put on the four ounce gloves. So um, a chance to fight him would just be amazing. Have you guys asked for it yet? Um, I'm not. I'm not really too sure. I got to speak to Ali about it, my manager. Okay. And uh, I'm just curious since. We saw Rampage up there. You'll always be linked to Rampage. Yeah. Did you see his fight last week? And if so, what did you make of it? I did see his fight last week. Uh, you know, he, he had his moments. Actually, he, he did a lot better than I thought he was going to be, uh, w especially once I seen him and seen how, how big he was, you know. But, uh, you know, he still shows that he has a lot of power in his hands, and he still shows that, you know, he's got that dog inside of him, which is which is important, you know, because when you are um, has been successful as he, he's been in, in, in life is – a bit different, you know, not as hard and, you know, a little bit of the dog dies, but he still has that dog in him to fight, you know, the fact that he can dig down deep and still push it to try to win a fight. If he wants to keep fighting contractually, he has to come back to the UFC. Does that fight still interest you or are you over it? No, I, I would love to fight Rampage if he came back and, and, uh, and I mean, I don't see him ever making anywhere close to 205 again, but uh, if, if, if he wanted to do a fun catch weight, yeah, I'll do a fight with him. I mean, I, at this point, you know, I, I, um, I, I would love to just, you know, have a fun fight like that and just, uh, you know, do something to, to make the fans cheer, you know. Okay. And uh, just a question for you, Eddie. Ten years ago today, Matt Serra knocked out GSP to become the champion. I'm wondering, where were you that night? Did you watch it live? And if so, what was going through your mind when you saw a fellow Long Island guy become champion? It was awesome, man. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was uh, I was probably one of the, the the first fights I watched, and you know, watching Matt do that, being a Long Island guy, growing up ten minutes away from him, he, he was like you know a legend in, in our state, and that was awesome because I think GSP is one of the top five greatest ever, especially at that weight, and he was the underdog. That was like a true Rocky story, and you know, I'm always the underdog in life, man. I always root for the underdog, so just watching that it means a lot and. It's just funny how every life comes full circle. Never in a thousand years watching that fight, I would think that would be my actual my coach. And you know, ten years later, this guy's in my corner, and and he's just not only a great fighter, he's a great coach, he's a great person, and a great father. So he's just a good all-around guy. Thanks, Eddie. Hey, Eddie. Whoa. So um, you said you will fight in New York. What would it mean to you to uh, fight in your home county on uh, July 22nd at uh, Nassau Coliseum? That'll be huge, man. That's my birthday, so that that, uh, nice. that, that so yeah, that, that's actually um, that's my birthday wish now. That's it. So that, that'll be great, man. Literally to be able to fight five minutes, our uh, gym's five minutes away, ten minutes, you know, you know, from my house will be amazing. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to fight in Vegas quite often, but with that fortune comes a lot of expenses. You know, I have four boys. I can't make any girls. So here at the age now where they want to come watch daddy fight. They enjoy it. They like to see all the other favorite fighters. It's not me. <laughs> but, you know, it gets expensive. And, and fans, they can't just get up and drive and come watch me fight. You know, it's cool watching on TV, but nothing beats being in that arena, feeling that energy. Fighting home, sometimes they say it can be a, a detriment because you put too much pressure on yourself. But that would be one of That be a birthday wish come true. So who knows? That, that could be in the near future. And uh, hopefully it comes through. And uh, speaking on the uh, redemption season, is there anything you can uh, give us any inclination about how ferocious, even though he's a 135er, uh, how big a personality Cody Garbrandt is? Uh, Cody's a man, man. Cody is awesome. TJ is awesome. I'm telling you this, I'm not being biased, but this season, I didn't get to see any sneak peeks besides what I just saw now, but I can't imagine 
all the footage they got. There's no way in the world that any episode can be boring. This is going to be action-packed from, from start to finish. Every single fight was unreal, like movie scripted. <laughs> it's it's going to be a great season, so I think everybody's going to enjoy it. And if you're not a Cody or TJ fan, I guarantee they're going to get a bunch of new fans on their side. And Rashad, uh, is there anything uh, you can tell us from uh, season 10, one of uh, my favorite seasons, the heavyweights, uh, from uh, maybe a story of one of the fighters with uh, McSweeney or uh, uh, Roy Nelson or uh, Kimbo Slice? Oh, uh, you said a story? Yeah, like that you and the fighter shared that maybe wasn't caught on camera. Oh, man, I can't even, you know, honestly, I can't even remember. It's been so long ago, man. Uh, I mean, pretty much every day, every, every every time Matt Mitrion came into the gym, it was always a story. You know, he was, uh, he used to do this crazy thing where he would come up to me and he's like, you know, I, I talked to my wife today. And I'm like, yeah, how, how so? And they say, no, nah, I just, you know, up here, we had a conversation. And, and and he would just say like some crazy, crazy stuff like that. And a couple of times I even went to the uh, production and I was like, hey, um, somebody should keep an eye on Matt because I don't think he, he's reacting really well to just being in the situation because he was, he got to the point where he was really, really stressed and then he just started like, I'll, I'll catch him by himself, just like talking to himself out loud and answering himself out loud. And I'm just like, something's not right, man. But pretty much every single day that he came into the gym, it was always something crazy. Awesome. And uh, I assume you're picking uh, Rumble tomorrow over DC? Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, not only because, I mean, uh, AJ's a good friend of mine, but I think that, um, I don't know, I, I feel like uh, DC may be overlooking him a bit, you know, and... Um, when you think you have somebody figured out and when you think that uh, they have no more surprises for you and, and, and it's going to go exactly how you imagine and picture, well, that's when things usually go wrong. And uh, for some reason, I just got a feeling tomorrow that it will go wrong for him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys, appreciate it.